welcome back to the channel today i'm going to be reading the rake this creepy pasta was suggested by the wolf pack thank you wolf pack for making the suggestion i appreciate it greatly and for anybody else if you have any suggestions please let me know in the comments down below and also make sure to like and subscribe it helps out a lot so again thank you wolf pack for the suggestion without any further ado let's get right into the video As I prepare to take my life, I feel it is necessary to assuage any guilt or pain I have introduced through this act. It is not the fault of anyone other than him. For once I awoke and felt his presence, and once I awoke and saw his form, once again I awoke and heard his voice, I looked into his eyes. I cannot sleep about fear of what I might next awake to experience i cannot ever wake goodbye this was from a letter found in the same wooden box where two empty envelopes addressed to william and rose and one loose personal letter with no envelope my dearest lady i have prayed for you he spoke your name I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I see his eyes when I close mine. They are hollow, black. He saw me and pierced me. His wet hand. I will not sleep. His voice. He came to me in my sleep. From the foot of my bed, I felt a sensation. He took everything. We must return to England. We shall not return here again at the request of the rake. Three years ago, I had just returned from a trip to Niagara Falls with my family for the 4th of July. We were all very exhausted after a long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At about 4 a.m. I woke up thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I was, it was, I used the moment to, to steal back the sheets only to wake him in the process. I apologized and told him I thought he had gotten out of bed. When he turned to my face, when he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed so quickly his knees almost knocked me out of bed he then grabbed me and said nothing after adjusting to the dark for a half second I was able to see what caused the strain reaction at the foot of the bed sitting and facing away from us was what appeared to be a naked man or a large hairless dog of some sort its body position was disturbing and unnatural as if it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by it, but more concerned as to its condition. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked it in a fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a fury of motion, the creature scrambled across the side of the bed and then crawl it quickly in a falling sort of motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds or probably closer to 5. It just seemed like a while. Just looking at my husband. The creature then placed its hand on his knee and ran into the hallway leading to the kid's room. I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he hurt my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it crouching and hunching over about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered in blood. I flipped the switch on the wall and saw my daughter Clara. The creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our daughter. She was very badly injured 
and spoke only once more in her short life. She said, he is the rake. My husband drove his car into a lake that night while we rushed our daughter to the hospital. She did not survive. Being a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first, and the local newspaper took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was never published, and the local tele television news never followed up either. For several months, my son Justin and I stayed in a hotel near, near my parents' house. After we decided to return home, I began looking for answers myself. I eventually located a man in, a, in, the town, in the next town over who had a similar story. We got in contact and began talking about our experience. He knew of two other people in New York who had seen the creature we now refer to as the rake. It took the four of us about two solid years of hunting on the internet and writing letters to come up with a small collection of what we believe to be accounts of the rake. None of them gave any detail, history, or follow-up. One journal had an entry involving the creature in its first three pages and never mentioned it again. A, ship logs, a ship's log explained nothing of the encounter, saying only that they were told to leave by the rake. That was the last entry in the log. There were, however, many instances where the creature visited where the creature's visit was one of a series of visits with the same person. Multiple people also mentioned being spoken to, my daughter included. This led to us to wonder this led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us before our last encounter. I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night, every night for two weeks. I would tediously scan through the sound of me rolling around in my bed each day when I woke up. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep or blurring through the recording at eight times the normal speed. This still took almost an hour every day. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was the rake. I can't listen to it long enough, even before, even to begin transcribing it. I haven't let anybody listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and I now believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thought that must have gone through my daughter's head makes me very upset. I have not seen the rake since I have not seen the rake since it ruined my life. But I know that he has been in my room while I sleep. I know and fear that one night I will wake up to see him staring at me.